when we are dealing with complicated force function, we may numerically evaluate the dynamic response of structure. There are cases where using formula may lead to more complicated situation, and we will need long time and huge effort to solve them. One of the common ways of numerical evaluation is central difference method. It is also known as an explicit method of dynamic analysis. Let's establish three key points on the example of displacement response against time curve. The middle point is the response at the instance i, and the time difference between this instance and adjacent instances is called time step. At instance i, instantaneous velocity can be calculated by determining the rate of change of displacement. We may use the displacements occur a time step before and after that instance to determine it. How about the acceleration at the same instance? Let's establish two points, one between the instance i and i plus 1, while another between i and i minus 1. The acceleration may be calculated using the velocity at these two instances. The velocity of these instances, on the other hand, can be further expressed using the displacement at the instance i, i-1, and i-1. The acceleration can be expressed the same. At the instance i, the equation of motion may be rewrite by substituting the velocity and acceleration expressions. Note that the external force fi is the applied force at that instance. After expansion, we may arrange the equation according to the displacement terms. The purpose of CDN is to predict the displacement response of structure at the next instance using the current and previous instance responses. Therefore, let's express the future displacement response in terms of other parameters. At this point, we may introduce the constants effective stiffness A and B to simplify the equation. Also, let's introduce load vector. From here, the displacement response at the next instance can be calculated using Hooke's law. Up next, at the initial step where instance i equals to zero, you may notice that both velocity and acceleration require our input on the displacement at the instance of negative one. From a series of operations, we know this imaginary displacement response can be determined by using the initial conditions. Not that the initial acceleration can be determined by using the equation of motion. We have obtained all the important equations we need. Now, let's see the procedure to implement CDM. First, we need to determine the system natural frequency and period. To achieve the stability condition, the time step should not exceed period over pi. After knowing the limit of time step, we may choose an appropriate time step. Next, from the initial displacement and velocity, we first calculate the initial acceleration. Then, we can straight away determine x at instance of negative 1 and constants such as effective stiffness A and B. Based on the time step we chosen, Let's extract the loading data as shown in this table. Besides that, we have also constructed another table to ease our analysis. At the instance of i equals to zero, the corresponding applied force is zero, as extracted from the loading data. We can also plug in the value for x i minus one and x i columns. The load vector can now be calculated using the parameters shown in the same row. Finally, by applying Hooke's law, we can predict the displacement response for next time step. Moving on to T1. Again, the force is obtained from the loading data. For x i minus 1 column, the value of x i at preceding instance should be used. Similarly, the value of xi column equals to that in xi plus 1 column at preceding instance. The log vector and next instance response should be calculated using the same formula. The displacement response for subsequent instance can be determined by repeating the process. 
the iteration can be continued even when there is no external load anymore. By doing so, we can inspect the response of structure under the effect of damping as soon as the loading ceases to apply. At the end of this example, let's have a look at force time and displacement time curve. Given this data, we may also construct a hysteresis curve by plotting force against displacement. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We will see you guys soon. Goodbye.